Hello everyone, we are uh, discussing moisture transmission related aspects of clothing comfort. So, we know that moisture transmission through textile material takes place in two form, one is liquid water form, liquid water transmission and the moisture in vapor form. So, liquid water transmission we have discussed in detail in last segment. So, in this segment we will discuss the moisture transmission in vapor form. So, if we see the moist if we compare the moisture transmission in liquid form and moisture transmission in vapor form, the uh, principle of transmission, the theories of transmission are entirely different and the moisture gets transmitted through the textile material, textile media at uh, two in due different form at two different activity levels. So, for a normal activity level most of the moisture gets transmitted in vapor form and in high activity level it gets transmitted in sweat form. Now, we will uh, discuss the moisture transmission in vapor form. So, moisture transmission in vapor form it it moisture vapor transmits through the fabric primarily in uh, through the inter yarn space and through inter fiber space. So, in this two zone through this two zone moisture in vapor form gets transmitted and moisture vapor diffuses through the air space between the fibrous material. So, open fabric structure promotes the diffusion. So, there if there is some open space, so moisture gets diffused through this. Now, try to see the, the what are the different layers through which the moisture gets transmitted. So, moisture vapor from our human skin from our skin gets transmitted to the evaporating fluid layer. So, just above the skin just below the fabric layer there is a layer which is called evaporating fluid layer then it comes inside the fabric layer. So, through fabric layer moisture gets transmitted and the transmission through the fabric layer takes place by different principles we will discuss and our main focus of discussion will be this part where moisture gets transmitted through the fabric layer from one layer to another layer and above the fabric layer it is a boundary air layer and this layer is uh, very important. If the moisture concentration vapor concentration at this layer is high then that will affect the moisture transmission of the fabric layer okay. and this boundary layer is connected with the, the effect this, uh, the, this is actually influenced by ambient air layer. So, if the ambient air layers uh, the moisture level it is if it is saturated then boundary air layer will definitely uh, will be affected and so the fabric air layer will get affected. So, all the layers will get affected. So, this the total balance has to be there then proper transmission of moisture vapor from humans our skin to the ambient layer will take place any of the layers if there is some problem then that moisture transmission will get affected and most important which we can control is our fabric layer. So, we will see that how the fabric structure, structure of fabric, structure of yarn even type of fiber affect the moisture transmission behavior through this fabric. So, basically if you see the moisture transmission through the fabric layer it takes place by actually it follows four mechanism. Okay. So, 
this mechanism this uh, mechanisms are diffusion first is diffusion of water vapor through the air space between the fiber so diffusion takes place through the air pockets if air pocket is not there so fabric is totally compact solid material so there won't be any diffusion to for diffusion to take place so there has to be some air pocket so that if we can create air pocket within the fabric structure then we will enhance the moisture vapor transmission through diffusion which is very prominent predominant principle of moisture transmission through textile material next is that absorption transmission and desorption so this only takes place for hydrophilic fiber so hydrophilic fiber material it get it absorbs the moisture and moisture gets transmitted through the material through the fiber and to the other surface where the vapor pressure is relatively low and from there it gets actually evaporated it dissolves so this is the principle and if we compare the diffusion principle and the second one absorption transmission desorption the diffusion through air is very very fast it's much faster than absorption transmission desorption but diffusion this second principle is very important where diffusion is not there so that uh, is uh, we'll uh, discuss and third is adsorption and migration so fiber is not absorbing the moisture but it gets ab adsorbed at the surface and from the at certain temperature it at ad, ad, it adsorption takes place at certain temperature below certain temperature at high temperature it actually moisture drop, droplet doesn't occur so that that adsorption is not that uh, doesn't take place so after the moisture gets adsorbed at the surface then the moisture is transmitted along the surface okay and last one is that it's a forced convection so like forced convective heat transmission we have seen similarly here the air flow of air transmits the it's enhance the moisture transmission so boundary air layer outside the fabric above the fabric layer as we have seen in last slide so if the air blows so at air as the air blows that that will take the all the moisture beyond the above the fabric surface and so forced convection will take place now we'll start the first principle of uh, moisture transmission it's a diffusion so uh, diffusion it's basically the vapor pressure which is the driving force so if the vapor pressure is created the vapor pressure gradient is created that will actually drive the moisture vapor so vapor pressure gradient acts as the driving force occurs on a molecular level at low speed so it's basically it is at a lower speed it cannot take place at high speed so it at a lower speed so moisture vapor pressure gets generated due to the presence of moisture and it it is it pushes the moisture that vapor to the other surface so depending on the the pressure difference the moisture gets transmitted so moisture vapor is transported from the higher concentration zone where the vapor pressure is high to the lower concentration zone so it follows the fixed law as per the fixed law the relationship is between that that uh, that is the moisture flux this is the moisture flux is equal to the dab which is the diffusion coefficient by and uh, it's a concentration of moisture vapor and this is the distance between the distance uh, that is the length so depending on the concentration 
So, moisture flux at higher concentration the moisture flux will be more. So, that the uh, difference in the concentration of moisture the moisture the which actually the concentration gradient this is the concentration gradient which is the driving force. So, it is proportional to the heat flux and the diffusion coefficient or mass diffusivity is actually it is of one component diffusing through another media. So, this is the d a b is the mass diffusivity. So, moisture rate of moisture transmission in terms of gram per square meter per second it is proportional to the, the concentration gradient d c a by d x this is the concentration gradient vapor concentration gradient. So, the diffusion which follows the fixed law. So, that is called Fickian diffusion the, and Fickian diffusion takes place through the air pockets. Only if we can create the air pockets within the fabric structure or yarn structure then diffusion will take place. In this case the diffusion coefficient does not alter with the change in moisture vapor concentration within the material with the change in temperature. So, this diffusion coefficient the constant it does not change with the temperature and moisture vapor concentration. In the case of air permeable fabric and microporous polymer this type of diffusion takes place. So, air per why air permeable fabric? In air permeable fabric there is there are pores available. So, that through the pores depending on the moisture vapor concentration gradient the moisture vapor gets transmitted and similarly why microporous polymer? In microporous polymer the moisture gets the pores are get filled with the with the moisture vapor and as soon as the moisture vapor pressure is more than the ambient air on other side. So, that moisture will get transmitted. So, the vapor grad pressure gradient has to be created as soon as the moisture vapor gradient pressure gradient is created the moisture gets transmitted. So, in addition to the Fickian diffusion there is another diffusion which is called non Fickian diffusion that means, the material the process which where the Fickian diffusion is not followed means the only vapor pressure Fickian diffusion takes place through the vapor pressure gradient. So, the, the diffusion which does not follow the law this actually Fickian law is called the non Fickian diffusion. The water vapor transmission rate of the hydrophilic polymer confirms the following relations. That means, for hydrophobic polymer normally it, it goes through the air pocket. The air it uh, moisture does not get uh, absorbed by the polymer. So, the Fickian diffusion takes place, but when we use the hydrophilic polymer then the hydrophilic polymer trans actual suppose it is a solid polymer it is a uh, polymer and it absorbs the moisture and then through the moisture through the material it gets transmitted to the other surface. So, water vapor transmission is equal to d where d is the diffusivity diffusion coefficient ok is the amount of the of a particular substance that diffuses across a unit area in one second under the influence of the of a gradient of one unit. So, this is the diffusion coefficient and p 1 minus p 2 these are the partial pressure gradient between the two surfaces. So, there are the any polymer surface uh, material is there in between two surfaces there are pressure difference p 1 and p 2 p 1 is the surface of the higher pressure and p 2 is the on the other side and d is the diffusion coefficient and s is the solubility coefficient 
that means the volume of gas that can be dissolved by a unit volume of solvent. Now, this is important for particular for a textile material here we are talking about we are not talking about the gas here we are talking about the it is a moisture vapor. This uh, non fecian diffusion it is basically it is for a gaseous material. So, a, this S is the solubility coefficient of gas here, but in our case it is a it is a moisture regain of textile material. So, as the uh, it is a equivalent to moisture regain of the textile material and L is the thickness of the material. Now, if we see a, a moisture of a hydrophilic fiber in uh, suppose a cotton fiber um, a fabric is made of cotton fiber and if we assume that there is no pore, pores are not available here. So, what happened in that case the moisture vapor diffusion takes place through non fecian diffusion it moves through the structure of the fabric which is actually it is very close to our that uh, absorption desorption principle. The hydrophilic material transfers water vapor according to non fecian diffusion. So, that for hydrophobic material like polyester if we see the transmission of moisture vapor through fecian diffusion, but transmission through cotton fabric is basically both by fecian and non fecian diffusion. The fecian diffusion takes place in through the pores whatever pores are available through that the fecian diffusion takes place and if there is no pore. So, in that case the non fecian diffusion will take place. So, non fecian diffusion is if we see it is very slow in nature. So, moisture vapor can diffuse through a textile medium by two principles the simple diffusion through air space within the fibrous structure it is a fecian diffusion and diffusion along the fiber itself it is a non fecian diffusion. So, if we see if we see the fire most of the textile material they have some moisture absorption moisture regain. So, the textile material it uh, moisture uh, transmits through the textile material in using both the principle fecian diffusion and non fecian diffusion depending on the moisture absorption hydrophilicity of the fiber the fecian and non fec and also depending on the air space present within the structure which principle will be predominant that actually uh, is uh, controlled. Okay. So, uh, if the air space is more that means, the fecian diffusion will be predominant. If the hydrophilicity of the fiber is more and air space is very less then non fecian diffusion will take place. So, moisture vapor diffuses from one surface to of the fabric to the surface of the fiber. I am talking about the non fecian diffusion to the surface of the fiber, then travels along the interior of the fiber, reaches to the other surface of the fiber, and from there it gets evaporated. So, this is the process, and if we see moisture is reaching to the surface of the fiber, it gets penetrated through the structure fiber structure it is reaching to the other surface and from there it is getting evaporated. This is one principle of non fecian diffusion. Another principle is fecian diffusion where pores are already present in the structure moisture vapor with higher pressure gets in it um, it is penetrated inside the pore gradually and vapor pressure is uh, developed there. And that vapor as soon as the vapor pressure is more than the other surface vapor pressure of other surface that will get transmitted. So, if we see the fecian diffusion is very simple 
and straight forward. So, that is why it takes much less time than the non Fickian diffusion and, and non Fickian diffusion to take place non Fickian diffusion if we see at a specific concentration gradient. So, if we see the concentration gradient is same. So, our uh, from the scheme and to the atmosphere if we, the concentration gradient is uh, fixed if we see the diffusion rate depends upon the porosity of the material. What is the porosity of the material and what are vapor diffusivity, diffusivity of the fiber. So, and diffusion coefficient of water vapor if you see through air it is much higher than through cotton fiber. So, here if we consider it is a cotton fiber diffusion through cotton fiber is 10 to the power minus 7 square centimeter per second whereas, through air it is much higher 0.239 square centimeter per second. So, what is here the porosity of the material it is controlled by the diffusion through air. So, if we can increase the porosity the diffusivity will increase and this diffusion is by Fickian diffusion. So, Fickian diffusion is very very high. So, if we have to increase the if our vapor pressure level is very high if we have to eliminate if we have to remove the vapor vapor at higher rate we have to follow the Fickian diffusion and for that our we have to create the air pocket we have to increase the porosity of the material. If we see that our vapor pressure uh, is generated or vapor pressure gradient or generation of our vapor pressure is slow very low. In that case we can depend on the water vapor diffusivity through the fiber. So, in that uh, sub uh, so the situation is that at very low activity level if we have suppose if we were two different fabric highly compact say with zero porosity polyester filament fabric another is the cotton fabric made of cotton fiber cotton fabric very highly compact fabric two fabrics and we are sitting idle. So, because that means we are generating the moisture vapor only. So, if we consider that porosity is least let us for argument we consider the porosity is 0. So, when porosity is 0 for both the fabric polyester and cotton in that case polyester will not have the non Fickian diffusion if we consider polyester is hydrophobic fiber. So, in that case polyester is not absorbing any moisture it is not transmitting. So, in that case even if we are sitting idle polyester will give uncomfortable sensation because the insensible perspiration whichever we are whatever we are generating it is not getting transmitted. But cotton although it is very slow transmission rate is very slow, but cotton will have comfort feeling because of the non Fickian diffusion through the fiber. So, depends on the rate at which moisture can diffuse into the into and out of the fabric. Okay. So, this actually at very high rate if we consider in that case cotton will fail in that case you have to generate some pores. So, we have to create the Fickian diffusion okay. the moisture diffusion through air portion of the fabric is almost instantaneous. So, we have to create that air whereas, through fabric system it is a limited. Okay. So, it is instantaneous it is a slow through the fiber which is due to lower moisture diffusivity of the textile material okay. and in the case of hydrophilic fiber assembly vapor diffusion does does not obey the fixed law. So, 
that is the way the it is a non Fickian diffusion that we have discussed, but hydrophilic fibers our advantage is that if we can create the air pocket the Fickian diffusion also take place. So, diffusion along the textile materials two stage diffusion in the case of hydrophilic fiber assembly two stage diffusion take place. So, hydrophilic say cotton fiber cotton fabric ok first stage is a Fickian diffusion through air gap as we have discussed and second stage it is much slower follow an exponential relationship ok that is a non Fickian diffusion between the concentration gradient and vapor flux it is very slow diffusion of vapor through fiber causes absorption of moisture. So, it is it creates another problem. So, when the hydrophilic fiber, so when a non Fickian diffusion take place, so due to absorption of moisture, the fiber gets soiled. So, it sometimes it slows down diffusion, the slows down diffusion means it is a which, which diffusion? It is a Fickian diffusion. So, non Fickian, Fickian diffusion also affect the Fickian diffusion by slowing down the by reducing the pore volume. So, fiber with like cotton fiber is an example where it when it slows down when it swells down swells up. So, it it slows down the Fickian diffusion. So, the now let us see the what are the factors which actually controls the diffus diffusivity. So, diffusivity of any material of textile fiber particularly decreases with the increase in fiber volume fraction that means, a proportion of fiber in the fabric that means, if we if that means, air pocket volume of air pocket is reduced. So, when the fiber volume fraction increases the air uh, pockets uh, proportion of air pockets reduce. So, diffusivity reduces. So, this diffusivity it is a it is due to Fickian diffusion increase in the flatness of fiber cross section. So, this is important the what happens if the uh, flatness increases it is like a devi deviation from roundness that means, the specific surface area if it is increasing then what happens it will actually drag the flow it is similar to the air flow. So, air flow if the specific surface area is increased it will drag the flow free flow of the uh, moisture vapor and the diffusivity decreases and it also decreases with the increase in fabric thickness. So, as the fabric thickness increases the path flow flow path will be longer. So, the diffusivity of the fabric decreases also this is reducing the porosity of the fabric and water vapor diffusivity has direct correlation with the air permeability. So, all these factors if we see these are related with the air permeability. So, by measuring the air permeability of a fabric we can actually indirectly get some idea about the diffusivity at least the Fickian diffusion. So, non Fickian diffusion is something else which actually where moisture gets absorbed by the fiber and diffusion coefficient if you see we it depends on the two factors one is the temperature of the system atmosphere and also the pressure though at higher temperature and uh, the atmospheric temperature diffusion diffusion coefficient is high at higher pressure diffusion coefficient will be reduced. So, the if the temperature is increased the environmental temperature is increased the diffusion coefficient will increase that means, it will have higher diffusion. So, and uh, if we uh, increase the uh, atmospheric pressure is increased. So, diffusion will be slowing down. So, in uh, general the diffusion coefficient of fiber increases with the increase in concentration of water in the fiber. So, if the concentration if the water concentration in the inside the fiber increases the diffusion coefficient also increases. So, 
after diffusion next uh, principle of uh, water transmission is sorption, transmission and desorption. It is an important phenomena of moisture vapor transmission which is responsible for maintaining microclimate during the transient con condition. So, that we have already discussed that the non fecian diffusion. So, it maintains hygroscopic fibers fiber material absorbs moisture from human skin absorbing fabric work as a moisture source to the atmosphere. So, it absorbs moisture and then it is actually it absorbing fiber it gets transmitted to the other surface and release of moisture. So, the difference here with the Fickian diffusion and this absorption, transmission, desorption is that the in Fickian diffusion moisture gets trans, uh, absorbed by the fiber in vapor form, but here it is a it is a basically in the at high concentration of the moisture here it absorbs the moisture is absorbed by the fibrous material from the human skin and it gets transmitted through the fiber fiber structure okay, through the fabric and in earlier case it was the through one fiber. Reduce moisture it reduce the moisture built up in the microclimate. So, as soon as it absorbs the moisture from the microclimate it reduces the moisture built up. So, our skin become dry. Okay. So, this process enhance the transmission of moisture vapor from human skin to the environment. So, that way it absorb the transmission of moisture vapor at low activity. That means, in case of hygroscopic material is higher than which do not absorb. So, that means, the at high at low activity level the hygroscopic material absorbs more moisture than the fabric fiber which does uh, do not absorb. That is why this phenomena is for that uh, cotton is comfortable at low activity level where polyester is not. That means, that uh, it does not absorb moisture at low activity level during absorption desorption process absorbing fabric works as a moisture source of the atmosphere. So, that is why it actually always the absorbing fabric when it absorbs moisture from the human skin it is always it acts as a moisture source to the um, environment it always uh, release moisture to the environment and it also acts as a buffer that means, it maintains the constant vapor concentration always in the around the surface. Okay. A constant humidity is maintained in the adjoining air through though the temperature change due to the heat absorption. So, it maintains the constant moisture vapor concentration because it is a constant source of moisture. Next comes the next phenomena it is a come it is adsorption and migration. So, adsorption of water molecules takes place below critical temperature. So, adsorption normally at certain at high temperature it does not take place. So, at below some critical temperature the moisture uh, droplet forms. So, at below critical temperature van der Waals force occur between the moisture vapor molecule and the solid surface of textile fiber. So, that force comes into picture the higher the vapor pressure and lower the temperature higher is the amount of adsorption. So, at lower temperature and higher vapor pressure that amount absorbs and by the van der Waals force will be high. So, adsorption will be more. So, this only adsorption takes place at the lower temperature. So, the factors which affect the adsorption, so amount of moisture adsorption depend on the moisture regain of the fabric. So, that means, a fiber 
with high moisture again it will absorb the moisture. So, adsorption will not take place. So, for cotton fiber adsorption principle will not take place. It will be absorption desorption principle, but for polyester for any hydrophobic fiber okay, the this principle will when absorption desorption principle is not taking place in that case the adsorption and transmission will take place. So, fiber with high moisture this is not the only condition, but high moisture again will will immediately absorb the moisture. So, moist fabric with low moisture again at high humidity level if the humidity level is low then the adsorption will not take because the droplet will not form the quantity of humidity should be high the moisture vapor should be high. So, the adsorption takes place at high humidity level at high sorption hysteresis the adsorption will be low at high temperature adsorption will be low that means, temperature has to be low to have more adsorption and also the dimensional change. Dimensional change we will discuss. So, with this condition we can achieve the adsorption with the increase in fiber swelling. So, the dimensional change we are discussing though as the moisture gets absorbed. So, dimensional uh, that uh, fiber swelling the capillary channel between the fiber gets reduced which result lower vapor transmission. So, capillary that, uh, that means, the pores will get reduced. So, that will affect the moisture flow. The distortion caused by the fiber swelling results in built up of internal stress which acts as the acts uh, which affect the moisture adsorption process. So, if the internal pressure is more the moisture ab adsorption process will be will get affected. The adsorption hysteresis increases with the increase in hydrophilicity of the fiber. So, that way we have seen the adsorption hysteresis if it increases that means, sorption hysteresis increases the adsorption will be lower. And last uh, principle is the forced convection. The transmission through forced convection, forced convection takes place when the air is flowing. The amount of moisture transmission in this principle is governed by the difference in moisture concentration between the surrounding atmosphere and the source. So, that is the governing principle and this is the same as the, the diffusion that moisture concentration difference has to be there, but in diffusion the, the moisture gradient pressure gradient was the only source of transmission, but here in addition to that that is the surrounding atmospheric moisture concentration in the surrounding atmosphere and C A is the in the source that is the in, case in, uh, in the clothing uh, case it is the skin humidity. This is the equation where Q m is the mass of moisture vapor transmitted by the by convection through the fabric with an area A, area of the A fabric and H and C A is the moisture concentration of the fabric surface which is high enough higher than the atmosphere. So, that moisture gradient uh, pressure gradient is created and the rate of moisture transmission can be controlled by the different uh, difference in vapor concentration. So, that this is the difference in pressure concentration and the mass transmission co transfer coefficient H m which is the, which depends on the fluid property that is the on the viscosity of the fluid. So, this is the mass transmission coefficient here. 
So, in windy atmosphere the convection method this is forced convection method plays a very significant role in transmitting moisture from skin to the atmosphere through the clothing. So, we have we will see one method we have developed in that method if uh, we have tried to see that the effect of the wind blowing how the if speed of flowing air affect the moisture transmission. So, now we will uh, see the uh, few uh, study research study. So, in this study in what we have seen we have got we have developed different fabrics of polyester uh, viscous. The same fabrics we have discussed in last class that the liquid water transmission wicking. In wicking what we have seen with the increase in viscous content. So, viscous content is increased from 20 percent to 100 percent that in 20 percent means 20 percent viscous 80 percent polyester. So, as the in earlier case in uh, liquid moisture transmission what we have observed as we increase the viscous content the wicking rate reduces and that is the, we have seen that is due to the water gets actually attracted by the hydrophilic fiber and which slows down the wicking. But in case of uh, moisture in vapor form the it is also in a moisture, but it is in vapor form here the same fabric shows the reverse trend means as we increase the viscous content that means here the polyester content is reduced. So, as we increase the viscous content the relative water vapor permeability increases increases at very high rate. So, from say 58 percent to 62 percent. So, relative water vapor permeability increases. So, this is basically so with the increase in viscous percent PV in PV fabric polyester viscous blended fabric water vapor permeability of fabric increases and mass per unit area of all fabrics are constant. So, this the fabric all the fabrics if we see the fabrics mass per unit areas are constant their porosities are constant the pore structures are constant. That means, if we see the same fabrics with air permeability the they have this almost same air permeability. there is no change in air permeability which shows that air air power pockets air pocket air op open cover factors of the fabrics are same. But here the fabrics that means pore structures are same but the for the same that means this is not directly related with the air permeability. So, moisture vapor permeability here it is increasing and that is mainly due to the non fecund diffusion here. Here viscous being the it is a hydrophilic fiber it absorbs the moisture and it gets transmitted. transmitted. So, moisture absorption, desorption and non fecund diffusion comes into picture here. And if you see the absolute moisture vapor resistance it reduces with the increase in viscous content. So, this is a very interesting trend which shows that the at lower activity level when the moisture transmission is in the vapor form we have to go for higher hydrophilic content. But when the moisture transmission is in liquid form at higher activity level then we have to go for the hydrophobic fiber. Okay. So, the difference in the water vapor permeability of the fabric occurs because some of something else rather than openness of structure. When the vapor transmits through the textile layer two processes are involved the diffusion and sorption desorption. The water vapor diffuses through a textile structure in two ways simple diffusion through air space and between the fibers and end and along the 
fiber itself a non fikian diffusion so fikian and non fikian diffusion we have discussed at a specific concentration gradient which we have maintained the diffusion rate along the textile material depend on the porosity of the material that we have already discussed also to the water vapor diffusivity of the fiber the diffusivity of the textile material increases with the increase in moisture decay that we have already seen so that's why the diffusivity increases here so as the fabric set and structure of all fabrics almost same the diffusion through air should not differ so that diffusion through air that is fikian diffusion should be constant so here it is actually in this case when the viscous content is increased it's other than the fikian diffusion so as the viscous proportion in the fabric increases moisture regain of the material increases causing the higher diffusivity so due to increase in diffusivity it is increasing okay as the same way moisture transmission through soft and desorption process increases with the increase in hydrophilicity of fiber so here the in this particular case when the porosity of the fabrics are same only the hydrophilicity of the fibers increases in that case the fikian diffusion is not there non fikian diffusion and sorption desorption comes into picture which is at lower level high hydrophilic fiber like cotton viscous fiber is actually suitable for that for low activity level so hygroscopic fabric absorbs water vapor from humid air close to the sweating skin and releases at the dry this all already we have discussed okay fabric with the less hygroscopicity provide higher resistance of air so this uh, will continue uh, in the next uh, session till then goodbye Thank you.